Let me make one thing clear, okay? I am a cat person and I am proud of it. So the least I can do is feed my boo the best cat food money can buy. I was elated when I discovered Smalls. If you're a listener of this show, you know that Miss Colleen does not live without her Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your refrigerator. And it's delivered right to your door. So make it your New Year's resolution to get your cat eating healthier with Smalls. It's 2024. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Mm-mm. Head to smalls.com slash rivalry and use promo code rivalry at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code rivalry 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code rivalry for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. Monet, are I you a fan of country music? Baby, Sixteen carriages, baby. So, are you are you a, are you a, are you a, a country music fan now? <laughs> well, you know, I'm I am wondering: Are Beyonce fans gonna like now love country music? Like, are they gonna now get in the country? I've never been one into country. The only country music I really liked, I liked, um, and he's not really <laughs> country, but I sang it at my cousin's wedding like two decades ago. And oh, well, no, that's maybe, yeah, two decades ago. No, I was 11, 12, whatever it was, sang at her wedding. I sang um, You Fill Up My Senses by John Denver. So I, I kind of, I guess he's kind of country. And I also sang for a party before I was on Drag Race. Carson Kressley had a party on Fire Island and they hired me to impersonate Loretta Lynn and sing a Loretta Lynn song. Bob, I look nothing like Loretta you Lynn. Sing it live? Yes, I sang you it sing live. It live? They say to have her here to Liz flies all the way to France. <laughs> I, I don't know any Loretta Lynn. I'm, I'm looking up Loretta Lynn's song. I don't think I know any of her songs. Like, I don't think I know any of her um, You One's on country. the way. Daughter, don't come home and drinking. You're looking, you're looking at country, first city. After the fire is gone, Portland, Oregon. Yeah, I don't know any of these. Girl, songs. they yeah, you know, they're like, hey, Monet, we like to uh, do we like to hire you to impersonate Loretta Lynn. Are you familiar? Bitch, I saw the price. I said, yeah, I love Loretta Lynn. Her music is. You said I actually happen to be one of the number one Loretta Lynn historians in the world. Actually, funny you should mention. <laughs> Girl, I made that coin, bitch, with Loretta Lynn. So are Beyonce fans gonna be into country now? Like, if they weren't before. I mean, I think that. Yeah, I don't know. I like part of liking an artist is liking the genre of music they make. Like, I'm attracted to, like, I'm attracted to uh, Michael Jackson because I like pop music. And then through pop, I found Michael Jackson. Um, and I think that maybe this is a new venture where Beyonce is doing it in a reverse way where you, where you find the artist and then you explore the music. I, I, I happen to like country music. Do you? Hey, I'm from Georgia. I grew up listening to country music. But I've never heard Drake Express. Like, who? Who, 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 you, who you been listening to? I like Charlie Daniels Band. I like um, Lone Star. I like uh, Gretchen Wilson. I like uh, some Toby Keith songs. I like some... Um, Work. Uh, those are the ones. I mean, early 2000s country. Uh, Carrie Underwood. I like Carrie Underwood. Like, um, Jesus Take the Wheel. I like, Dolly, I like Dolly Parton. I like Oboe Cephas. I like... Uh, Work. All right. We, 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 we will leave you. I, I didn't know that you liked all these country people. You know, don't take the girl. Don't take the girl. Take Jimmy Johnson. Take my man's man. And take my best friend, Mo. Don't take the girl. You, you should listen to Don't Take the Girl. Don't Take the Girl is a great... Taylor, you know Don't Take the Girl? Yeah. Dang, no one knows Don't Take the Girl. Don't Take the Girl. Jacob, you know Don't Take the Girl, Jacob? Jacob. I'm not I'm not very familiar with that song. Jacob, no. Jacob, Jacob don't like country. Tell, Jacob is not a country gal. No, Jacob, tell, tell, tell Monet your favorite country song, Jacob. Oh, Gunpowder and Lead by Miranda Lambert. <laughs> Ew, Jacob got so... Oh my God, Jacob, calm down, bitch. Um, Have you heard? It's such a good song. It's She's so serving so hard. No, there is... It's, um, it's about I, her... Um, go ahead. Like her husband beats her, has beaten her, and she's like waiting by the door with a shotgun to kill him when he comes home. Oh my god! And the corner is, I'm gonna, I'm going home, gonna load my shotgun, wait by the door and light a cigarette. He wants a fight. Well, now he's got one, and he ain't seen me crazy yet. Oh, that's a good one. That sounds like that sounds like that sounds like like, like you and Bob's origin story. Yeah. Anyway, how, how, yeah. Well, you, you gotta go listen to it. 
Jacob has not engaged in any form of domestic violence, and we don't own we don't own guns. There's no guns in our home. You, oh my god, I got to tell you what happened. Oh my god, I have to tell you what happened to me. Wait, wait, wait. before we go, we need to do sibling watchery. <laughs> oh yeah, we have I'll to. I'll say that for a while. y'all. I have a wild story that I will tell in the next rivalry. It's crazy, and I have video proof. That's ah, I have to tell about. Oh my god, I have to tell uh, next next rivalry. I'll tell y'all the story. Crazy. Oh my god. All right, well, in the meantime, let's talk about episode six of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16. I still cannot believe we're on season 16. Um, well, bitch, get you, into it. Uh, you are you are six episodes in. Bitch, when, when are you going to realize? When, when are you going to get... You have been saying this every week, girl. Well, it's just crazy to me. You know, when, when we're on season 20, I think you'll feel the same way. When there have been as many seasons since you've done a season, you will be like, oh, my God, season 20, this is crazy. That's so funny to think that I'm still going to be working with you in that time. Um, anyway, so. Wait, is it me or is it <laughs> oh my God, his camera pro is probably. what you say? I, you broke up. <laughs> it's so funny you think what? So I actually think it's so funny that I'm still going to be working with you in, at that point. Um, anyway, so uh, the girls walk into the season. Let me be this podcast. Let me be clear about that. <laughs> you, you see the little button on there that says "leave" you can click it right now. <laughs> oh my god, I'm spitzing. I don't. I'm spitzing under my armpits. Like I'm sweating, and it's not even hot in here. <laughs> okay. No, okay. Good, Good morning. Yeah, like you ain't never sweat. You're wild. <laughs> um, you're like, like I'm sweating. This is crazy. Um, <laughs> so Amanda to our meeting just went home, and Q is surprised that she was in the bottom so early, which. Uh, I guess she got that feeling. She got she got sick of being so close, and she was so far she couldn't have possibly been close last episode. And um, you know, Q's Q's like upset, and, and to be honest, I'm still a little annoyed that uh, that Q said, "I don't know why you're so mad. I don't know why you're getting so mad to tsunami. I don't know why that's irritating me, but it's really irritating." When tsunami me. wasn't even raising her voice, like she's like, "What about tsunami? Like, tsunami was not giving like, what? Well, why the fuck?" She was just like, "Well, you said my name, girl." She's like, "Why are you so mad?" I'm like. I just don't know why you're getting so mad. Um, it was very annoying, and I and I and I did not like it. Vibes didn't like it at all. Well, I will, I remember um, that the girls were really the girls uh the other girls are really shading the thick and the uh, the thicks and the stick uh, over their shared win, and I'm like, does a shared win really? I, I mean, it is. Yes, we know it is. RuPaul gave them all a win, but does it really count though? Like when they like adding up wins at the end, are they like, oh yeah, they're one that you won with the other three girls, four girls? It does count. If 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 on All Stars when two girls win, each one of them had a win. If that counts, then so does this. You know what I mean? And also, I mean, no shade. Dawn was shading, but like they said, bitch, it's more than you have. You don't have a single win. <laughs> this is literally this is the definition of a how you gonna hate from outside of the club. This is literally that. Like you were literally up for elimination. You have the nerve to bump your lips and shade my win, bitch. You were just on a chopping block. I love. You should be lucky. You're. Sick. I love when people say bump your gums. I love when people say bump your gums at me. That should be, I, I love that shit. Also, you obsessed with Usher. First of all, you dress like Usher. You you, you brought up his, uh, how you gonna hate from outside the club you can't even get in. You're obsessed. You're obsessed with Usher well, Raymond. Usher, Usher had a big moment last night. I don't know, I'm gonna dress like Usher. Usher had a big moment last night, and um, I'm just here to celebrate. Uh, uh, caught up, get me feeling it. Caught up, and it feels in Do the A. Do the A. Caught that. I eat that. Uh, so the camera. Okay, what I've noticed when they come back in, the camera keeps like everyone's talking about who's had work done, and Q is as silent as a person can be. But the cameraman clocked that and kept zooming. In. <laughs> and everyone's that. like, "I had my lips at this, and I had a little Botox in my lips, this, that, the other." And the cameraman kept like zooming in on Q, who was like. I know with them cheeks, with them cheeks, girl. She got, she got them. Uh, she got the Kamora Black special. Them cheeks, because even when she just not when her face is rested, her cheeks are still like. Would you, if everyone in the room was talking about getting work done, would you, would you cop it to it? Actually, I don't, I don't, I don't think you. If, if you got work done and everyone in the room was talking about it, I think you'd be like, not me. That's not true, bitch. I, on this podcast, I talk about the fucking dicks I've been slinging and and, and shitting on my chest. You think I want to talk about some work I got done? Hey, there's, there's, talking about having sex, and talking about what you've done to your body, are two, there, there are two different levels of modesty. There are two different levels of privacy. You know what I mean? Not for me. 
Noted. Let's go on <laughs> to... Uh, I, was like, I was surprised that Sakura has had her lips done. I was like, oh, wow. Um, I guess the fur for me had some little things out there. But, I mean, I will say there are some other uh, 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 RuPaul's Drag Race girls that you did not that you have not realized that they have had their shits done. And their shit is... Anyway, you know, that's not... Let me try to out somebody's business. That is, not my, that is not my tea to spill. But I, I be shocked sometimes. I'm like, oh my God, are you, I, are thought, you I thought that was your natural are state. You say their realize. names. Say <laughs> no. their names. No. no, 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 no. Can we get a first letter? A first letter of a name? No. Yeah, first letter. See no. They first letter. Before season 10 or after season 10? No, they weren't before season 10. Yeah, they were after season 10. No, Um... Why, wait, why are you just shocked to see if you're having lips done? Because I thought that was her natural, you know, I thought that was her natural lip lipage. I didn't realize that th- that was that was some um, aftermarket work. So I Googled it, and I didn't realize you can get Botox. So you get Botox around your lips. To make to them, like, help. No, to help it curve. Yeah, like up. this. It does this. So you get Botox, not in your lips, but, like, up. I was Google. I'm, I just just Google like above your lips, and it helps with the upturned mouth or something. I thought about getting a little uh, bit in my top lip. Do y'all think I need some in my top lip? Some some Juvederm, like a little. So I can be just more like. Yeah. You should get it. Um, we've had this conversation nineteen times. You, either you're gonna you should have get off the pot. Like I, the amount of times you push your lip and ask us our opinion, but you don't ever take it. So bitch, get well, Juvederm I'm or don't get it. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to Sarah. Yeah, and just to uh, note, uh, Juvederm yeah. is a, a sponsor of the podcast. So just just noting that moving forward. Yeah. So so you, so you literally have podcast. free Juvederm. You literally have free Juvederm. And you're not, not getting. You've been asking us it for is not free. free. Discounted. Then yeah. sibling ten. Anyway, sibling ten. Anyway, so even at a discount, you keep no, no, no. You keep asking us, and we keep we. Keep, everyone's commenting below. Are you going to take our advice? You're going to just keep asking us. Well, what I'm going to say no. So I want, I want, I want, I want a yes. Well, then stop asking, bitch. We don't think so. <laughs> I wrote down. Okay, this is going to sound shady, and I don't mean this. I'm like, are we supposed to know like why? Like wh- why is Chara famous? Is she famous for doing for the dance or the guitar? Oh my god. I don't know. I generally don't know. Is she famous for the dancing thing or the guitar? Because she's like a really good uh, okay, guitar. Charles, Charles is a singer. Charles is a famous singer and a dancer. He's a singer. And back in this, uh, Charles, Charles is a singer, dancer, and she's a musician. She's a musician and she's a dancer. Song. And Charo was uh, famous in the 60s and 70s as like a TV personality who like did music and dancing and all these variety acts. And uh, she's also a world famous uh, flamenco guitar player. Malenguana. Like, wow. Like, Mala Malaguena is her top song on, on Apple. Uh, and, and just for as a disclaimer, the views expressed by Monet Exchange in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Sibling Robbery LLC. Are, are you, are you, okay, uh-huh. when, when Bobby's saying some shit, put that same energy, Jacob. Don't be on, only put that energy on me. When, when, when your man be saying off the wall shit, g- give me that same energy next time. You're about to get gathered in these comments by our listeners. <laughs> okay. Um, Charo, Charo is, um, Char- yeah, Charles was big in the 60s and 70s because of these like variety shows and being a singer and a dancer. She's also has acted in several things. Um, she's probably one of the most famous people from Spain. Um, and I've actually met Charo twice and I've seen her play guitar. It's honestly crazy. I want to see so it. You said this last time. I want to see it. I really want to see it. Someone's fingers move that fast, and she's up there in this beautiful dress, sitting on a stool, looking gorgeous. She's also kind of like a sex pot. She's known as like a sex pot with this like bodacious body and very like coochie 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 sexual dance moves. Coochie coochie is her famous move that they right. got her really famous. You know, the more, the more you share, the more you coochie coochie, the more the more the more wealth it brings you. She says, work. Um, okay. Oh. When did so they do the mini challenge? And anytime Tsunami puts on one of the little chicken wigs, she looks so good. Like, I think Tsunami has taken the kitty cat wig from me because she, the way she just looks effortlessly beautiful when she puts on a kitty cat is kind of wild to me. Every time she puts it on, I'm always stunned. I'm always blown away. She is very beautiful. And some of these queens take quick, quick drag very morphine seriously. Literally. Same, same name, same time. Morphine's not kidding. I was like, girl, it's quick drag, girl. No one's judging by your drag. Like, it's okay. <laughs> Baby, no one's judging you. No, I, honestly, I think that playing Jane took the right approach. Like, don't waste your time trying to look slay and stunning in this mini challenge. That's that's not that's not the point of the quick drag, baby. Quick drag is supposed to look dusted and busted. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I just I don't know what Q was doing. I don't, I don't remember. Was she just did she do something crazy? 
a lot of stomping and like like she was trying to kill roaches and like oh the flamenco know, dancing right the flamenco dancing challenge right 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 right, right. Uh, I noticed that the plain Jane does this thing when she wants to be funny she does this yes 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 but also when she talks this, when she just talks she's like I just don't know. But specifically, especially when she's trying to make a joke, when she's trying to make a joke, she cranks it up to like even when she was like when um when um if she's like trying to make it lighter, trying to like lighten the moment when when um Sophia was like, hey, don't be mean. And she was like, put me in my place, mother. I mean, it's fucking and weird. Like, I I don't understand it, but I mean people people have everything they do with their humor to like punctuate their humor. Uh, but I just don't know. I is every time she's trying to tell a joke, I'm like, this is this is wild. Right? Yes, I agree. I've, I've, I've noticed her little, her, her little, her little funny tick. Um, it's like when when Trinity, yeah, girl, is feeling real fierce. Yeah. <laughs> tsunami, tsunami wins the mini challenge. Uh, if she won a trip to Spain, I feel like this is the first time we haven't won like cash in the season. I, don't, I might be, I might be wrong, but I feel like everyone's winning cash, and then she just won a trip to Spain, which is exciting. It is exciting. I love Spain. The first time I ever went to Spain, it was in Madrid. I went with um, I went with uh, your good friend Bradley Wilson, and uh, <laughs> Spain was. By the way, if y'all, know, if y'all know what your good friend means, y'all know, you know what your good friend. When someone says you're a good friend, you know what they're saying. <laughs> you know what they're saying. I'm gonna, put it, I'm gonna leave it at that. Think I, about the time you've ever said you were a good friend. And bitch, I went to the first time. I, that's when I experienced Boyberry for the first time. It was wild. Boyberry. Boy Bear is this like club they have there, but it's also like a sex club and they have like glory holes and shit like downstairs. It was saying wild. Voyeur? <laughs> what? Are you saying voyeur like to watch? Boy or Barry. Boy Bear. Boy Barry. I that's what I thought I initially thought you were saying Boy Barry, and then I was like, it's Spain, it's probably Boyer. Boyer. <laughs> and I was like, it was Boyer. And I was like, it can't be Boy Berry. I was like, because Boy Berry doesn't make sense. It can't be Boy Berry. But it was. It was Boy Berry the whole time. Boy Berry. Yeah. Which, is, which is Derek Berry out of drag. <laughs> <laughs> Boy Berry. So we find out that this week the girls have, and this is the first time Draggers has done this, like, explicitly said. This is a design, branding, and storytelling challenge. As opposed to just people just think it's a design thing. Like, RuPaul is letting the audience know that it's a branding and a storytelling challenge. Because those are probably really important. They're not probably. They are important pieces to know about this challenge. Well, they've done branding challenge before. Remember the branding of the uh, of the, the 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 talking trash can and yeah, the, but they, the, the, they had to brand those. Yeah, but like RuPaul is saying, all the things that is that 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 this challenge encompasses. I think to like spill out because I think even going back for all stars and stuff like that. Sometimes, like for example, the fucking TikTok dancing one. They were like, "This is a this is this is a dance challenge." When they when they first sell the thing, and then we were all working it on. The producer had to come back in and be like, "Guys, guys, this is not just dancing. It's also branding." Now we we're like, "Okay, bitch, what?" So and then they had to come back. So it was they had to keep on coming back and like explain it because people had a hard time trying to conceptualize what they were trying to get at. So I think the show was trying to do a better job of telling the girls what it is. Um, and so yeah, RuPaul announced that they're gonna the queens gonna be making their own dolls, and then this is when Nymphia reveals that she collects and customizes her own brass doll. Every challenge they do, <laughs> Nymphia's like, "Oh, I actually do that." <laughs> Nymphia's girl. like, "Girl group actually try to choreograph for a girl group dolls. I actually own a doll factory, and my family makes dolls. Uh, girl, we're going Nymphia. to the moon. I'm actually an astronaut. Like she, who's the who's the girl? Who's the girl from SNL? I was like, yeah, actually, I." I Nymphia Mattel, girl. She really does everything. And then also, they all got choosing materials. And, of course, Nymphia's grabbing all of the yellow. And I'm like, I can't. If I have to hit one more banana yellow thing, I'm going to lo- I'm gonna pull my fucking eyelashes out. She really likes bananas. Like, she <laughs> really <laughs> likes. You're no longer the queen of fruit. Let apples go. Apples are nothing. <laughs> this girl's obsession with bananas is honestly wild it's crazy wild last challenge the whole thing about was about potassium and da, 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 da. the first challenge was her entrance look was the yellow thing that she had the yellow then after her entrance look her first runway was that yellow banana peel thing and then now the last episode she was rapping about bananas and now she's choosing yellow to do more bananas she is obsessed also i tweeted this and you know i'm serious i mean honestly it's her business but like do not go to this girl showing tip her in bananas give this girl money <laughs> <laughs> Do not. I saw someone put her in a banana, and then the banana wasn't ripe. She tried to eat it, and she's like, "It was not ripe. It was like a green banana." Y'all, do not tip this girl in bananas. Give her money. 
money into the club. Don't be trying to pay her in bananas. Don't pay her in bunches of bananas. Give okay, this bitch money. As someone who had a thing that people would, sponges, what people got really creative, though. So they what people would do, which I really appreciated, they would, they would tip me a sponge, but they would put a slit in it, and it was always a fat bill in there. Like, it was always fives or more when someone tipped me a sponge. So I was like, at that point, I'm like, I'm cool with that. They would always tip me, like, big bills in the sponge. I had a few people give me purses at meet and greets. No one's ever tipped me in a purse during a performance. With money in it? But I have Never? had... I've never, no one has ever tipped me because when a purse is not like a sponge, a purse you're handing a giant purse or a clutch, <laughs> you're like you're holding up a thing. So, when someone hands it doesn't always look like they're handing you a purse, they just like could be just cheering, holding their purse. It's not like a sponge. If someone's, if someone's holding up a sponge, you know, oh, this sponge is for me. Every purse, everyone who brings a purse to the club is not bringing a purse because they want to give it to me. I mean, you on club. stage and someone is like, woo, and you're like, oh, and you try, and, but like Bob stole my purse. Yeah, exactly. So I can't just go grabbing every purse that's in the air. Yo, big but man. I have had people make purses and give them. I have had people make purses and or buy purses and give them to me as gifts oh and meet and greets. Like Bob, Bob, uh, uh, last night Bob stole eight purses. <laughs> and he go, Monet's like, we're the airport. That, that person got a purse. Bob, go take it. That's for you. She bought that for you at the airport. Go grab that purse. See, this is what you gotta watch. Your know, these motherfuckers raised in Brooklyn are crazy. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. These Brooklyn girls are not right in the brain. Um, oh, that so they're getting ready to. So, well, go ahead. I wrote down. Hair has been fucking corny. Two thousand and nine. Plasma. Whole whole gentleman prefers black. I was like, oh my god, this bitch is I just like fucking. plasma. I, you know what I like about her? She knows that she's cheesy. And she's like, I don't care. She and same. I know I'm. Look right now. If whenever I tell a joke, I promise you, I will be the first and the last person laughing at my joke. I can assure you. We know. I will get more the cackles out of my humor than anybody on the block. So shout out to Plasma and the cheesy corny girls because honestly, she's over here living her life. And by the way, did you watch her um her Don't Run on My Parade video? No, I didn't see it. Immaculate. I have to see it. This is- video is on YouTube. Type in plasma, don't run in my parade. Do you want to take a short break and watch it and come back? No, it's no, like no, three no, minutes. No, 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 no. no. We have we, 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 we got to keep on going. You don't want to watch yeah. Anyway, I also want Bob. Every time I say something about plasma, Bob, Bob always goes, I like it. I'm not saying I don't like plasma. I am saying you don't that watch, you, you don't watch it. You can't spare two minutes to watch this video. This is crazy. I, I, I want to be very clear. I did not say to not like plasma. Bob and Jacob are trying to push this narrative that I don't like plasma. That is not true. I'm just saying she's incredibly, like she's incredibly cheesy and corny, and it like drives me a little nutty sometimes. Um, you, don't, you don't watch your video. Like you can't anyway. spare two minutes to watch your video. You don't have two minutes. By the way, just so y'all know, we have two minutes. I just want to be clear to y'all. We absolutely have two minutes. Bitch, anyway. But Monet doesn't want to. Safira is also um oh well you, you you're gonna say something before I say that, I think. I was just saying that Plasma wants to do this vintage look again, which she really is sticking to her vintage guns. And you know she hasn't done it a whole lot though. She has not to be to, to be she has not done uh, that uh, that a, a whole lot this season. So I'm not like bothered by that. This is true. She hasn't done it a ton. I just something about that aesthetic. Something about queens who want to look vintage all the time. I'm like why? Like what? What is it about this time you like? What is it about the fifties? What vibe were the fifties giving that you're like? I gotta get me some of that fifties glamour. You know what I mean? I mean, to I people, who were, people who were who were who were growing up who wear seventy shit, bitch. Every era is bad. I'm just asking why. I'm just asking what is it about the era. That's all I'm saying. What is it about the era that you love so much? That's all I'm asking. I'm not saying it. I'm just asking what is it. I mean, I've I've done looks with that aesthetic in my in my drag, but just not, but not literally your promo look. Your promo look, literally. Do what? Your promo look. That was the theme. That was the theme. Was it? It's, yes, it wasn't my oh, yeah. theme. We were all just like that. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Let's keep going. Um, Plasma describes her idea, this like travel jet setter look to Nymphia. Nymphia does not seem impressed, but also Nymphia doesn't have an idea herself. So like, <laughs> why are you judging someone like that? You don't even have an idea, bitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also um, Safira is having her Asia O'Hara uh, Trinity of the Tuck syndrome. 
She's going out there. She's helping Maya sew up her look and teach her how to put on a zipper and really helping her and considering other girls before themselves. And um, <clears throat> I think that's admirable. That's very sweet. But bitch, you're in a competition. Fuck these bitches. Bitch, I'm, I'm a... Trinity is the queen. I've done two seasons of Drag Race with Trinity. Trinity will... Trinity is good, though. She will, like... She's doing hers and helping you at the same time. Like, Trinity is not, like, leaving herself behind to finish your shit like Asia did on season 10. Trinity is making her stuff and also helping you, but prioritizing herself and helping you, if that makes sense. Yeah, what? because, what, like, it seemed like Safira wanted to make this coat. Obviously, the coat never got made. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the coat never made it to the runway. But she did help Maya make this cat suit, which ended up in the bottom anyway, and which I could have been and told her that the cat's going to put in the bottom. And even Wait, though she why? made the cat why, suit. Why, why could you have been and told her that? Because it, the fabric was hideous, and the 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 we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll get to the garment. I'll tell you why. Mm. Um, well, let's talk, let's talk about more about this 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 the sewing stuff going on in the room. Jane and Geneva are having this little moment, right? And it seems like Jane is trying to get under Geneva's skin, or just trying to get some fabric from her or something, or trying to get her to give her something, right? Mm -hmm. It is. Well, I mean. But I can't tell if it's like more like mind games and Jane is trying to, since she's trying to, she, since she's in her nice era, she's going to be a nice girl now. She's like trying to like uh, 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 subliminally um, trick Geneva and get under her skin. I feel like the girls on Drag Race who say they're trying to play mind games are like not really playing mind games because real mind games are like what Nymphia did on that first sewing challenge. That's a mind game. When Nymphia was like, I'm just so stressed out. I don't know what I'm doing. Then she won the challenge. That's a mind game. But come over and being like, hey, sister, which a lot of girls do. What are you doing? That's just kind of like girlfriends kicking and having a good time. You know what I mean? But when, but what Nymphia did and in, in, in her first win, that was a real mind game. Yeah, I opinion. agree. Well, also, Geneva is just a mess. She wasted all of that red fabric. Like, I'm like, what? She's like... She was all that fucking fabric, then had to resort to using the same blue fabric that PJ and Plasma are using. I'll be so annoyed. I'm like, bitch, I'm like, no, you cannot use my fabric. PJ already used some. I don't want somebody else in my stuff. I'm like, no, you cannot use my fabric. So now what? Well, Geneva has Geneva has some taste issues, in my opinion. Girl. Like, I feel like her drag is always because of her body and the way that she dresses herself, she always looks like a toddler's in tiaras. In chai private eye. Like she always looks like a, like one of Honey Boo Boo's friends. Like and <laughs> Honey Boo Boo that, that's not something you ever seen. Ginger Minge doesn't look that way, and Ginger Minge is probably shorter than she is. But Ginger Minge, but Ginger Minge understand. I think Ginger Minge understands how to dress. Oh yeah, more for sure. Age or pro? I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Ginger Minge doesn't look like a toddler's in tiaras. Yeah, unless she's intentionally trying to look like that. And I'm trying to think of other short, round people like a like Miss like MIB. Mrs. Zebra Brooks never looks like a taller than Tiara's. So oh, it's yeah, not true. her. Well, but it's the way she's short in real life. She's not tall. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I have no uh, 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 um, relation. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Jane Dior Fierce is short. She does not like a taller. It, it's, yeah. the, it's the way Geneva's always dressing that makes her look like a taller than Tiara's. And I can't stand it. <laughs> I do not. It really upsets me. Also, her, anyway, Jane goes. Her, go ahead. Her, her wearing them little. Her wearing those contacts out of drag when she gets started the swirler when she gets eliminated. I don't know. I just can't. Geneva just really cringes me out sometimes. Anyway, go ahead. Um. So let's go over. So so Jane finally does go over to Plasma, who is consumed with making her jet set 1960s oppression garment. <laughs> <laughs> and. and and while she's trying to uphold uh, Jim Crow laws, um, Jay sneaks in and steals about um, a yard and a half of this blue fabric. Which, by the way, the fabric is really beautiful. I can see why so many people were drawn to it. But also, like, I don't know if, I don't know how Q got the best. Like, every fabric Q had was so good. Every one of them. It was. It looks so. We'll get there in a second. I'm, I'm getting. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, obviously. you bitch. You. I was a bitch. Can, can you, you. You were talking about one. You done jumped to three different things. I can't even keep up with you, bitch. Did you, did you do a bump before this episode? Maybe. <laughs> um, um, I, I, I wrote down. Um, uh, 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 plasma. Of course. Of course. Plasma went as Dorothy for Halloween, and of course she had the little shoes to pick up and show us in the frame, like. Of course. Yeah. Plasma is further proof that if you support your children's bullshit, they're going to turn out gay as hell, and you're going to end up with a plasma. 
and successful. Look at Plasma go. Um, do you believe Nymphia when she says that she um, is uninspired? Because in Untucked, she kind of she kind of like no, it is part of my thing. Part of my thing is like being stressed out. I mean, yeah, I think that I think that Nymphia. I mean, do I believe her? Uh, I have to take on her word. I mean, if she says that's part of her process, then work. Some people need to be like, ugh. Well, I mean, we both have. I we know people that are just, they be stressed out just to be stressed out. They be like, bitch, calm down and take a beat and think. Like, I have people that it's just part of their crazy. She just be like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, and the house is falling apart, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like that's some. That's just how some people are. That's true. Yeah. Um, Megami is offering help to Plasma, and Plasma is like, she's like giving her note. She's like, maybe take that part off. And honestly, I like Megami. Megami helps a lot of people, but isn't like over the top about it. And it doesn't seem to really be getting displayed. Like, it's not getting, it's getting airtime and it's getting talked about on Twitter, but it's not part of the conversation that Megami's helping a lot of people with a lot of things. I, I'm not discounting that. I don't know who are all, who are all these people that she's always helping. Well, she helped, she, helped, uh, uh, she wrote Nymphia's verse. Uh -huh. She helped with the choreography. She helped. Um, Nymphia with the choreography? That was Plasma. No, the choreography the last time, uh, Geneva was like, uh, Megami was like, you know, see, we read Megami's tweet about the it thing wasn't last that. time. It was she, 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 she wrote Nymphia's verse. I mean, she wrote Nymphia's and she helped Geneva edit her. She didn't do choreo, though. Oh, well, yeah. she helps a lot of people. One says she helps a lot of people, and it seems to not be getting part of the storyline. But, but Bob, Bob making, keep making this bitch Mother Teresa. M fucking M Mother Megami over here. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But because of this whole thing, Plasma, Geneva, and Jane all end up using the exact same fabric for the majority of their garment, which is obviously a problem. And then as they're getting their makeup done, Maya asks Geneva, like, Maya asks Geneva, like, what's your theme? And she's like, Texas edition. Because everything's bigger in Texas, but I'm the smallest thing <laughs> in Texas. So no one's smaller than me, but, ex so, but everything else is big. And, <laughs> And then, and then Maya asked her the most, like, smartest question. She goes, why don't you just do the leg hair thing? And she was like, oh, well, it takes a long time. Okay, bitch, doesn't this all take a long time? Like, you could have done your legs at the hotel. Yeah. It's gel. Don't you do it in gel? In gel, You could have yeah. done your legs. You could have done your, and we've never seen anything, anything. like that on Drag Race. And it's like her whole fucking TikTok thing on social media. Yeah, it, like we never got to see this infamous like leg hair. And that, honestly, that sounds camp. It sounds funny. And I was like, Maya ate. Maya was like, bitch, do the legs. And then also the doll, bitch, the doll. You bitch, you put three strands of hair in the doll, and you got leg hair in the doll. It's not gonna take you forever to do the doll. Or just take a sharpie and draw it. Take a pen yeah. and draw it. Let me make one thing clear, okay? I am a cat person and I am proud of it. Cats are great companions and cats bring so much joy to my life. So the least I can do is feed my boo the best cat food money can buy. And cats want a variety in their diet. Just like we do, girl. Do you want to eat the same thing every day? I don't think so. So my cat's old food would stink, okay? So I used to dread every time I had to go feed her because I knew I was going to have to taste, smell that funky food. I was elated when I discovered Smalls. If you're a listener of this show, you know that Miss Colleen does not live without her Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed recipes made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your refrigerator, and it's delivered right to your door. So make it your New Year's resolution to get your cat eating healthier with Smalls. The team at Smalls is so confident your cat will love their product that you can try it risk-free. That means you get a full refund if your cat won't eat the food. Period. It's 2024. Are you still feeding your cat kibble? Mm -mm. Head to smalls.com slash rivalry and use promo code rivalry at checkout for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use my code rivalry. 50% off your first order. One last time, that's promo code rivalry for 50% off your first order plus free shipping. So, okay. So Jane is saying that she's, okay. Jane is like, I'm harsh. Because my parents are Russian and they don't appreciate any drag. So that's why I'm mean. <laughs> Bob, no, you are you're being wild. It was it was more layered than that. No. You, but she said, 
Russians are blunt, which is why I'm blunt. And I know that my parents have a very, like, they don't respect any drag. So I guess I'm even harsher when it comes to drag queens. I mean, I, that, that's, that is low key the gist of what she said. Russians are mean, and my parents hate drag. So now I'm mean to drag queens. That was pretty much the gist. Can you give me the more nuanced take that I'm missing? I tried so bad right there. But she was like, I was like, not this bitch trying to excuse her rude, uh, harsh, abrasive personality because of her Russian heritage. But that shit, this, shit, this bitch is growing up in America talking about, well, back over there, they're mean. So, bitch, I'm mean too. <laughs> I was like, Okay, I know. I was listening. I was like, not trying to excuse her rude personality on her on her people's on her ancestors being Russian. I was gagging. Well, so when then um, Q is like, well, I'm like, I grew up really poor and like hungry. And watching the way that Megami handles this, I like Megami. Megami is someone that I would like to be friends with. Like, I think she's just like really. You all are high, you, you're really, one of her idols. She loves you. She seems really friendly, and and the way that she handles situations, I like it. It just it seems really Magami, caring, but not like this to you, though. I, I Bob, I used to, Bob was one of my idols, and I met him, and it was the worst decision I made. So, baby, protect your peace, and do not befriend this bitch, Magami. You hear me? Listen to the words. Oh, right shut now. the fuck do up, not bitch. befriend this bitch. Magami, do you see what I've done for my name's career? This could be you. <laughs> well, I, well, I will say this. So I was gagged. That New Yorican is not a hard thing to say. And like she was like, okay. she was like, New York, you, 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 you. I was like, New Yorican. What is hard to say about that? Well, I was thinking the same thing. And I, and I was like, am I being crazy? Because New Yorican seems really easy to understand is New York and Puerto Rican. It seems now granted I lived in New York City for 12 years. So I heard New York Rican a lot, but I I feel like the first time I heard it, I was like, got it. It's like the first time I heard someone say, um, I'm I'm a Puerto Rican. <laughs> a Puerto Rican means you're a quarter Puerto Rican. Yeah. And I did not have to do I didn't have to do any uh, crazy <laughs> mental, mental gymnastics, gymnastics to realize <laughs> to realize that a Puerto Rican means you are a quarter Puerto Rican. You know, you know, what, know what I mean? mean? She couldn't say it, and she she's like New York. Like what? What does that mean? I don't. I was like, girl, New York and Puerto Rico. Like, <laughs> also, maybe this is me, but it, at face value, I genuinely thought that Q was Latinx. Did you think so? I, no, I didn't really give it much thought to be honest. She looked like I mean, she does kind of have that. She has that look where you, when you get work done, you kind of become racially ambiguous. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, my God. Now Bob's saying this bitch is the fucking cat lady. <laughs> but you know when you get work done, you start kind of being like, what race are you? You know what I'm saying? That? I was like, yeah. what's going on? Also, I, also, and again, I her story was very sad, and I, I was like, whoa, this is this, I hear it. But Q always has such an about turn. With, like, the conversation would be, she's like, New York, and I was like, ah. I was I grew up really poor and I was like oh I, I was like I literally took a I took like a, no I took a bite of my sandwich and the next frame she was crying I was like oh my god how did we get here which again is a very sad story. Okay, we can't we can't we can't we can't I'm not, I'm not laughing at her story I'm just saying it just happened you are laughing no you're laughing I'm saying it happened so quick like I was like I was sitting there like. I was like, I was, I was saying that bitch is New York Rican. Then I went back and then she was crying. <laughs> this reminds me of back on um on when they tend to like a red table talk uh on All Stars and and Ginger Minch <laughs> Ginger Minch was like, hey y'all, welcome to Red Table Talk. I haven't shit in fucking <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, "Welcome to Red Table Talk." I have a vowel construction. I was like, "What is? is what? How did we get here?" Uh, um, also, I love when they were doing the make, the getting ready and doing the makeup. I thought about this too. When like M Megami points out, she's like, "Bitch, you turn a leaf over, it's still a leaf." I was like, "Yeah, bitch. If you turn a maple leaf over, it is still a maple leaf. Like it is still the same thing." About I want to be clear, the phrase is turn. The phrase is turn a new leaf. 
So you're the, in theory turning a new, but also a leaf. When, when they say turn a leaf, it refers to like a page in a book, like what? a leaflet. Yeah, turn over a new leaf doesn't mean like literally outside in nature flipping over leaves. <laughs> it means you're turning to a new page in a book. Did y'all like know it in like a? In like, did y'all know that? Am I just dumb? Did y'all know that that's what that means? I have, did not know that was the, ref, the, the the reference that they were making. But I think what Mangami was saying, you're flipping over a leaf, but you're just flipping over the same leaf. It's not a new leaf because the, the phrase is turn a new leaf. Which, which is makes sense. Is that what sense. PJ said? She said, I want to turn over a new leaf? I think she said I'm turning over. I think she said I'm turning over a new leaf. I think so. But that's what turning over. The, the phrase turning over a new leaf refers to turning to like a, a, a blank page in like a stationary book. Like a leaf. Got right? it. Got like, it. You know, you know a leaflet. You heard a leaflet, right? Yeah, bitch. I went to church. I I, I used to hand out the leaflets. Oh, okay. Um, also, um, I want to um, listen, y'all. My motherfucking single body drops on uh, February 23rd. So make sure y'all go and pre-save that shit. It's on my website. It's on my Instagram. Pre-save my single body because the more pre-saves I get, it adds up to when the bitch comes out so I can chart. So fucking save my shit. Also, I'm coming to the Soho House in London in um, April. I mean, nope. March 18th to the 23rd. So get tickets to come see me at the Soho House to do my show Life Be Lifing and sell me out in, so in Soho, bitch. What's good? I wish that I could tell you that I know what the song sounds like. I, I wish I could say I had like a preview or something, but we just have to trust. If there's anything like one of the other music, I'm sure it is absolutely majestic, magical, and remarkable. If it's anything like the rest of your music, anything like your, your EP, anything like March, anything like Love Like This, I'm sure it's great. But I guess I'll find out when the world... Well, when you the know fuck what, out. Rob, that's very sweet of you, but you're lying. I In my car that night when we were doing the blues looks, I played my music for you and Jacob. And y'all were like, oh my God, Monet, this sounds so good. So you have heard it. But you didn't tell me the name of the song. So yes, I, I had heard the song. Yes, I did. I told you. I did, they were all, we all talked about everything. Oh, well, you know what? It sounds well. I've already given my sample approval. It sounds fantastic. And I can't wait to go here. <laughs> Let's get it was it was a long time ago though, so that earworm I, I have to I have to fight to get that memory back, honey. Um, so let's go and ahead. Also, and what, if you live in Los Angeles, <clears throat> sorry, if you live in Los Angeles, we'll be doing sibling rivalry live for Netflix is a joke on May fifth, and you can get tickets at seethedragqueen dot com. Come see the live maybe show. Maybe we'll perform body there. Ooh, that could be fun. If you perform body, I'll perform my new single, my new song, uh, Terminal D. I've, I haven't heard that one. Well, it is available on iTunes and Spotify, so there's no reason why you shouldn't have heard it. Wait, you're out already? Right? Oh, yeah, you out because you were number three on the charts, which congratulations to that. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so let's go on to these looks. First of all, this this composite picture of the judges, why is RuPaul 9,000 feet tall? I think I, I think Jacob edited it that way. No, this is how it was on. This is the I retweeted this. This is the picture from World of Wonders official uh, or RuPaul it, Drag Race. It, it is. That is the photo. Uh, because fucking T.S. Madison looks like a three-year-old. They always do this. Ru does look like gar like crazy. Yeah, yeah this is kind of wild. This is my favorite dress Ru's worn this season. Beautiful. This is so stunning. So beautiful. It's that same like uh, fabric he used on that red gown and in realness. It's beautiful. And uh, Law Roach is the guest, which is really uh, exciting. Um, I Law would, Roach, I agree I was with you. Make Law Roach a permanent judge on this show. He was incredible. I agree. Law Roach was really good, and and you know I had to get the privilege of judging with Law Roach on uh, Legendary, and what a great talent. So let's go on to Tsunami. Tsunami's. Let me let me read her thing. Meet Tsunami Muse, the mystica with a sharp eye for style. She lives in New York, has a pet dolphin, and got her GED at the age of fifteen. She's good at walking back and forth from the bank to the to the bodega. She also enjoys shopping, photography, and Photoshop. Her unique qualities are wearing pants. Her special message is that you never overdress. Everyone else is simply underdressed. I want to say a couple of things. First of all, no shade, Tsunami. You're underdressed. <laughs> like I'm baby, underdressed. you're for drag. For drag, Tsunami's underdressed. The only thing she has that's like over the top is this bow on her neck. But that I is the only thing that's over the top. Okay. Over the top doesn't mean that it has to be something like big and like crazy. Like you can be, you can be, oh, I don't, I don't, I disagree. I said what I said. I think Tsunami is underdressed for this particular challenge. And I'm, 
I don't, I do not, I do not love this look. It, it, I, I would not wear this and I would not be, I would not be like in awe if I saw someone wearing it and I don't like it. Wow. How do you feel about it? I think she looks good. I like this outfit. I love the color combo. This pink with the two blue, uh, well, uh, maybe it's not pink. It's like a purple lavendery color with the with those two blues. I think the co the colors and the tones look very pretty. I love that she wore this hair, which I love this hair. Um, I, I I think I, I, I think I think she looks beautiful. She looks beautiful, and I love her doll. She she she's matching the doll spot on. All everything is the same. Her doll. Does I actually love her dog, doll, and I agree with what with what uh, Law Roach said was that her doll was the saving grace um, because her doll looks so good and she really matched the doll. Um, what do you think about her writing? I like her writing. I mean, I don't get the pet dolphin thing, but I guess there is a there is a level of of, of um, fantasy here because they're dolls, and obviously dolls don't have uh, you know you can make up anything so. I like it. I like the GD at 15 and going back and forth from the bank to bodega. I, I thought it was cute. Let's go on um, to the I don't really love the writing. Oh. Well, I want to talk about the writing. I don't, I'm not crazy about the writing. Like, none of it made me laugh. And I agree. I honestly have the same thing. I actually, I think I don't know. Like, I'm like, this is great. I'm kind of like, it's whatever. Um, I also don't get why she has a dolphin. It didn't seem to go with any of her branding. Like, the dolphin just seems so, so random. Like why do you have why do you have a why do you have a dolphin? I just don't understand. And just you all know that sniffle is Monet. That was not me, so I don't want to hear any comments. That was Monet. Let, go ahead. Can you read uh, Sophia Cristal's and can you do her voice? I don't remember. She did something like this, didn't she? That's, I don't understand much, why that's she's pretty doing much. that voice. Is she an announcer? Um, that's that's pretty much the voice. Meet Sophia Cristal. She is regal, inviting, warm. High maintenance and scary as hell. She's a she's good at singing, singing and back singing and backhanded slaps. Is that what she said? I don't think that was that was what she said. Yeah. Crystal loves uh, Crystal loves to work out her voice because she ain't going to nobody's gym. She comes with hot throat tea or oh, throat coat. She said, hot throat tea, opera coat not featured, and gown. And six Grammys she stole from Maria Callas. Um, are you are you are you one of the Maria Callas haters? No, I I think Maria Callas, Callas is a an amazing talent. Is she one of my favorite singers? No, but I think Maria you you cannot deny how how influential she was to the genre and to the art form. Um, <clears throat> I thought that Safira's was funny. Safira Safira does a thing when she opens she opens her eyes really big, and I don't understand what is what is that what. Like what? I, I I don't understand what that's supposed to give. What what is that giving? Do you do you get it? Like she's shocked. I guess she's like trying to be like scary or I don't know. I I, I don't think that I don't think that Safira's personality is shining through this season. I and mean, we're six episodes in, and all we know about Safira so far is that she is nice, she's motherly, and she can sing opera. And like. But what are the what are the other parts of Sophia? What what are the other part? What are the parts of Sophia Crystal that are less than perfect? What are the parts that we can relate to on a level that we're like, oh, I, sometimes when I get angry, I do that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and I want more out of that from her. And I feel like I, we're just not seeing that. Um, but that being said, this dress looks really beautiful. I love the dress. I actually, I actually like. I, I would wear this dress. <laughs> I would wear it um, too. I don't like the hair on the doll. It's a little. I mean, it's probably hard to style doll hair. <laughs> To be bitch, fair. bitch, I would not know um, what I would do. You know what? You know what I have to do. I would have to do a poof. I would have to do a poof. I don't know what the hell else I would do. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. Yeah, I don't love this hair on the doll, but I think that she looks good. I think the doll is good. I think that her her um her branding message was pretty good. Should we move yeah. on, can we move on to plasma? Mm -hmm. Meet plasma. She's rich, beautiful, sea sickening, and nauseous. Her style is old fashioned glamour hag. She's great at moving her mouth, standing still, and theft. She lives the White Lotus Manhattan in the kitchen refrigerator. The plasma passenger is the uh, um, the, pla the plasma passenger of the Pacific Edition is the first featuring adjustable eyebrows. Just for you, Michelle. I don't understand any of this writing. I don't understand why it became a seasick and why it became like a a, a, a sea thing. Well, because she's traveling. She's choosing her her form of travel is is by boat. Which that part makes sense to me, but I just don't understand why she live. Why do you live in the refrigerator? Like you live in the refrigerator? 
Yeah, I don't get and it. Why, and why? And why? Do, and why do you have adjustable eyebrows? Because they missed like, the her about her, her eyebrows. What did Michelle say about her eyebrows? I don't remember that. It was, it was in her makeup. That's why she, I think that's why she made the reference. Like Michelle told her. I think last episode. Her eyebrows. I think so. Oh. And old style hammer, old school glamour hag. That part makes sense. She created moving her mouth and standing still in theft. So I, like, so you're like, are you like a thief? Like, but the, how, how does you being a thief? Why do you live in a refrigerator? What? What? This doesn't make sense. This writing does not make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Um, <clears throat> I did. There were th- some parts of it I do think are funny. That first line, meat plasma. She's rich, beautiful, sea sickening, and nauseous. I thought that was funny. Um, but like I the agree. refrigerator thing and the theft thing are weird. And um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I thought it was fine. A, a little less. I think than her fine. look. Her look is good, and she matches the doll really well. I did not understand why she would not pin that fucking. Thing to her head that was wild i was really shocked that she didn't pin the the scarf to her head i also hated that the scarf didn't go over the back of her head it was just on top of her. it was a it was like a ribbon basically like a thick thick ribbon um, well i also didn't understand the judge was being so upset about it i'm like okay it fell and she adjusted it twice they're acting like they're acting like this bitch took her wig off and and, and put it back on on the stage i'm like it fell and she did that like is that so egregious i agree it was kind of awkward and I, and I wish she would have just like just like you, if she would have kept it down, it's just, it's funny that she's like, she's like, and it also, you know, you're on the runway for what? At the longest 40 seconds. Yeah. So like, if you to do that twice, it's, when, someone, when, when you see a performer on stage fidgeting with their garment, you lose a level of comfort in the audience because you're like, they're not comfortable. So now I'm not comfortable. So I agree that she should have just had it fall and just let it fall. Like, just let it be down, Mary. Just let, if you would let it be down, I don't think they would have given her that critique. Let but I do think line. she looks... I think she looks pretty good, though. Like, I, I don't really have any complaints about this garment. I think she looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, let's go into Plain Jane. Meet Plain Jane. She's funky, spunky, and a little bit skunky. It, and it's, it's, it's the entire time she's doing her thing. <laughs> Is she a magical mermaid or retired ice skating instructor? Your guess is as good as hers. She comes with her outfit, hair, and greasy, stinky burger finger. Taco head, taco head, but you got a taco head. Taco she, head. <laughs> she resides in the, in, the, in the Pacific, and her special message is that she is secretly a Russian spy here to infiltrate capitalist American households. Her most consistent quality, uh huh, of course, is her robust wop, her widely appealing personality. That was funny. This doll retails at twenty nine ninety nine an hour. That was funny too. Well, RuPaul, RuPaul said this doll retails at twenty nine ninety nine an hour. That oh, wasn't really? actually her joke. Oh. RuPaul said this doll retails at twenty nine ninety nine an, an hour. hour. Um, I thought Which was the funniest part of the whole thing. I thought the plain Jane looked good. I thought this is a very good look that she constructed in the workroom. And I, I agree, she didn't match her doll. Do, do you think they styled the wigs on the dolls? Because, like, I mean, bitch, if I'm, I, I, I just, that, that, if these girls style these wigs themselves, they better work. Because I, mean, I would not know what the fuck to do. I would literally, anyway. Um, I think that this was a funny, I think her, her, her thing was funny. I do think it was funny. I think that the WAP, uh, Wiley Pooling Personality, was good. Um, um, I She referenced herself with the burger finger thing. <clears throat> and this is a thing a lot of girls, people talk about leotards all the time. Like when drag queens wear a leotard, bitch, like what are you? We Half the time we end up looking like a fucking ice skater because you, you fucking make a leotard and you stone it. You look like you're about to do a uh, fucking Simone Biles somewhere. So I think that was funny. And so I thought her thing was funny. Yeah, I think that she looks really good. This is this is a great look, honestly. I, I don't like I, her. Her writing was pretty good. The only part I didn't care for was I just don't think I don't think Burger Finger. I don't I don't want to hear about Burger Finger, and I didn't like the face she kept. Her face kept like I kept being like, "Bitch, just walk the runway." Like, why are you like? Why are you doing? It's kind of like when um there was someone else who just who I can't remember a couple of seasons ago. And I was it was either Utica. Or, you was it Utica? I was like, bitch, just walk the runway. Stop <laughs> doing weird shit. Just walk down the runway, Miss Thing. Um, but she does look really, really good. Yeah. And I think that her writing was 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 pretty remarkable. And the branding was great, I think. Yeah. She kn- she knows her branding. I think it's, Plain Jane is a really great queen. She's really turning it out. Um, let's go on to the banana queen herself. The Banana Queen, honey. 
Meet Nymphia Wynn. She is fun, dumb. There we go. We, we, we are not going to go an episode without a queen proclaiming to be the dumbest bitch in the universe. This, this is the dumbest fucking cast of Drag Race in the history of <laughs> dumb, dumb, idiot, dumb contestants. Um, but this is by their own admission. They're all claiming how dumb they are. Nymphia Wynn. Meet Nymphia Wynn. She is fun, dumb, and full of potassium. Nymphia's style is glamorously yellow while, while, stand, while standing doing nothing. She's very pillable and occasionally breaks wind. The special doll, this special doll comes with bananas, milk, and cream, and a limited edition to die for recipe for your own banana smoothie. Her message is um, is let's all be yellow. You know, I, I just I love that she loves bananas. I just don't love them as much. I don't love them as much as she does. And I like bananas. The you do. I told y'all Bob was a body slam a promoter because he didn't get his bananas. Um, but I, I, the only line that I really liked in hers was the first one: the she's fun, dumb, and full of potassium. I was like, bitch, that's all we need. It just that's the only that's enough banana for this thing. But she went on to make everyone be yellow and like all oh, the smoothies. Like I was just like, it, I do think it's a little. Too, and what's crazy to me is they read Dawn like Dawn, no more colors. No more crazy makeup. We've had it. This bitch has been yellow 19 times, but she ain't getting to know. Yeah, she's been 19 different bananas, three all in the same episode. She has been banana down, and they're, and they're like, Don, if I ever see you mismatch one more thing or do a crazy makeup, I'm fucking you up personally. I'm not going to, I'm going to keep you around. I'm going to follow you to the fucking hotel at night and fuck you up. By the way, if you're doing such a good job with this banana thing, keep it going. <laughs> Michelle literally told Dawn on site. Michelle's like, Dawn, next time you in a, in a crazy color, it's on site. Um, that being said, I think that Nymphia looks really good. Amazing. Um, the, boat, the boat was looking like it was having some, like, I don't know, she was, like, holding it. But when she's standing still, it looks really good. The boat was looking like it was, like, kind of going through it a little bit when she was, like, kind of walking, trying to, like, present it or a whole fluff it or something yeah but that being said she's great and she got this wig from mandatory from mandatory mm-hmm. meeting gag but i was also gagged that the bow on her dro- on her dress didn't match the bow on the bow on the doll and the hair was different so i think that's why she wasn't in the top could be i mean i i don't think this was a top look but i think it was the yeah, highest what, what, really you don't think you don't think this was you think okay you think that this that what this look is less than plain jane's look um, when I look at them as a whole, I think that I think that the top two looks for me are Dawn and Q. For sure. And I think this could have been a third. And you know, honestly, her and Plain Jane could be rotating. Like they, they both look they both look good, to be honest. To me, to me, these looks these looks both look good, but I think that um Plain Jane had a much better script than she did. Like, I would agree. way better. Like, yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Sounds better. I would agree. I would agree. Um let's go on to being uh, more on. She is a gorgeous. Me? Oh, it's, it's me. It's me. Sorry, I'm the problem. It's me. She is gorgeous with and that. Read, 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 meet Morphine Love. That's part of her writing. Read that. Read <laughs> oh, that. Read is it that. part of her writing? I don't know. I think that she said it. Meet Morphine Love Dion. She is gorgeous with a hint of stunning and a splash of why am why am I here? Why am I here? She can climb a palm tree without popping her filter, her fillers. She comes with shoes, hair, and a suspiciously long pinky nail. She loves to get pumped and staying in the tanning bed for a long ass time. Her most special quality is her beautiful smile. Ding! Her message to the world is to save up all your money so you can get a BBL. The BBL girls. I feel like she the entire episode she was like, I'm not gonna do any BBL stuff. And it was literally like she was like, "I guys, I know, and I'm not, and, and I'm, and I'm taking Michelle's notes seriously. I'm not going to do any more of that BBL stuff. I'm, 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 I'm better than that. Anyway, my message is save all your money. I got fillers, and I love getting filled up, and I have fillers. And it's like, girl, I feel like what, what happened to what you had said, girl? The the wig, the wig on the doll is tragic. <laughs> this wig." <laughs> On this doll is criminal. Girl, crazy. Truly criminal. Crazy. That being said, jail. she looks good. And I liked her blackout tooth. Yeah, jail. Send her to jail for that wig on that doll. That wig on that doll looks insane. Bitch, that doll had a hard night. It's a hard night. Girl. Truly. Road hard, put up wet, honey. Yeah. 
Um, also, wait, before you go to Maya, Maya, I th- before you used to read her thing, she should have done it in the share voice last week. If she did her whole thing in that share voice, the, the Drew would have lost his mind and she would have not, she would not have been the bottom. Drew? Who is Drew? Oh, uh, Rue. <laughs> Drew Paul? Drew Paul? Drew Hill? Drew Hill? Let's go from Drew Hill. Imagine um, like, meet so- my name on the page. That would have been funny. Um, meet Maya Monlape. She is fun. She's uh, she's fun, shy, outgoing. Is she shy or she outgoing? <laughs> no, thank you. No, she's fun, boring, shy, outgoing, <laughs> tall, short. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, what are you? Shy or outgoing? <laughs> she's fun, shy, outgoing, and is an energetic diva who lives in Miami, Florida. She comes with shoes that will have you flipping for the gods and a body and a booty that will have all the boys looking. Her quirk, her quirkier personalities are plucking her nose hair and being afraid of thunder. She's the only doll that can do countless backflips. She loves to flip and travel the world. Okay, I, I need to say this. It's like Banana Girl. Baby, we know you flip. <laughs> Baby, I promise you, even before we saw one, we knew you flip. You told us. You have told us a lot of times you flip. We know you flip, baby. I promise we know you flip. Um, this writing is not great. Why why, why are you picking your nose hair? It's just like something she just does in real life, but like we don't know that about you. And is she just afraid of thunder in real life? But again, we don't know that about you. And what was weird that RuPaul was like, why do you have a zipper in this cast? Oh my God, I wrote that down Bro, too. How, I wrote that down too. How was she getting... Is she going to get her whole body through the neck? <laughs> Ru, do you, is she going to go through the foot? Because is she going through the, the foot? Is like, she going to put her body through the blue hole, the keyhole? I was like, maybe if the cats would went down here, if maybe like this part was in here, she could get it on. I was like, baby, she just, yeah. the cat goes up to here. How the fuck is she? I was like, I was like, RuPaul clearly has not sewn anything in eons. He's like, I, I wrote down the exact quote because I was like, is, is, is Ru drunk? Oh, he says, it's a, <laughs> it's a stretchy material. Why would you need to put a zipper? I was like, what? Like, RuPaul, you've been on drag races in stretchy dresses that have zippers in them. But also, Ru wears that, that long scoop. Ru, Ru, doesn't do, Ru doesn't really cover her neck up a lot like that. Ru wears these, like, long things like this down here that you can just shimmy into probably. But I, I am get, I'm like, girl, RuPaul, you, she, can't, she cannot fit her whole body through the neck hole. I was gagged Ru, that's that. that's crazy. I was gagged at that. That being music. said, this garment is, is hideous. But that this is an absolute... The the doll is bad. The doll has been the doll was whatever happened to this one happened to um whatever happened to Morphine's hair happened to this entire doll. This is this whole doll is a mess. This outfit is a mess. This she has no neck. She is three feet tall. The, I don't understand. I don't understand that she has the salvage edge still on the. The, Let me say something. The if there one thing Maya will do is hide her neck. I think that is that is that is her drag superpower. She can hide her neck in anything. Yeah, I, I I don't think that Maya got the doll right. She didn't get the writing right, and she didn't get the design right. She honestly did not do well in any part of the assignment. <laughs> I have to be honest. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> that is terrible. This look is crazy. That wig with that headband, it just looks crazy, girl. <laughs> I just don't get it. She looks wild. I don't know why you would do this. Also, if your wig and was that, that wig color, why don't, you just spray, why don't you just spray the doll's wig to at least match her color? Like, bitch, just get some spray and spray it. Some hair, some hairspray. I mean, some like, uh, uh, she, yeah. Yeah, some, some, some spray, spray paint. Uh, spray paint. Yeah. But it also, with it, she did, like, she came with a, with, a, with a cape over her arm, but it was uneven. And it was like, I was like, what's happening? And the cape also was split down the middle. It wasn't connected. They weren't capes. It was... Too big. It was just two squares on her shoulders. Oh my God, bless her. Her tits. There was so much going wrong. Let's go on to uh, Megami. I. It's my turn. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Meet Megami. She's dressed in the official state colors in New York, blue and orange. I had no idea. She's great at at hailing cabs. You can always find her riding that D train. The Megami New Yorker edition comes with a metric card and a large cup of coffee. If you think Megamu, Megami is like all those other cheaply made dolls from out of town, forget about it. 
This doll is 100% certified New York made strong. Pick up your Megami Native New Yorker edition doll at a bodega near you. This might be the best writing, honestly. Like, well, the branding is on point. Well, she... I, I think Jacob may because I think she wrote the D train that she she originally said the D tra, the D train that is I was like no she should have said like the D what did I write she should have wrote she said like the G train to somewhere but she said the D train that is like she 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 fucked the joke up her own joke which was I think would have been really funny I, I liked it that way I, I honestly I liked it that way I thought it was it was really good I think this is probably the best writing. I don't love her head. Her headpiece looks incredibly cheap. I mean, like... Does it? Insane. To me, the headpiece looks really cheap. But this outfit looks so... Exp- it looks like the one that Beyonce was wearing when she was floating above the stage. It's that same fabric. That blue. I think I think it's that same fabric. This she, this looks really good. I would wear this minus the 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 cup, the hat, and the and the and the Bible or whatever the sexual liberty is holding. It's not a Bible. What is she holding? I don't know. It's it's what, the, what yeah. is that? You're, you're, you're a New Yorker. What is that you're literally holding? Bitch, I don't fucking know that bitch. I don't, I don't know what that bitch got in her hand. I will say she should have really made a joke on herself. Like, she probably didn't realize it was going to be so viral. It should have said, like, um, protect drag or what, what the fuck that thing did in her performance. That would have been a real protect, protect queer art. Would have been protect great. Protect queer art would have been very funny. Um, I don't I don't like them flowers on her shoulders. I do like the fabric, but I don't, that's, I, I don't love what she's doing with her makeup. I don't know what. Putting like putting the brow highlight under. First of all, I hate that she does these like half brows. I'm like, bitch, give me a full eyebrow, please. Give me a full eyebrow. I get this may be her thing. I'm not in love with this look that she does with that. And so, with that being said, I do not like that her brow highlight was this blue color. It was so strange to me, and I, I'm not really loving her makeup. But I do agree, the blue color of the cast suit is dope. But that's literally all I really love. I don't really love the hair either. What about her writing and her doll? I think I think her writing was good. I think the writing's good. Beside that one joke that I thought she could have made funnier by just saying the D train to blah 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 blah. Um, um, but I do think her writing was good, and I like that her doll for the most part. I think is like her. Um, yeah. Let's go on to Geneva Car, and like a car I saw on the street last night. This is a wreck. This is insane. I. I these, when she walked out in those white shoes, I was, be, if you have big feet, that's not the shoe. <laughs> when Laura Roach said everything's bigger in Texas, she meant those white shoes. Baby, he ate her up with that. These shoes Law Roach were eviscerated so, her. I mean, it, no shade, rightfully. Laura Roach said from the neck up, beautiful. But for pretty much the challenge... <laughs> He was like, from the neck up, great. But you know everything that had to do with the challenge? You know, literally, the the sewing, the the, the doll, the, all the stuff that you were supposed to do, that was bad. And that was a read. And honestly, he's not wrong. This I just don't understand what I'm looking at. I just don't <laughs> understand what is what and what goes where. I do think the doll, what, what this doll has is like, Velociraptorian collar thing. Not if she could have pulled that off, if she could have pulled that off, that would have been so cool. If she looked more like the doll, that would be sickening. I agree. Her her makeup should have been much more graphic with that white, with that white the way that the doll is. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, oh, I'm reading. Everything's bigger in Texas, but she's but she's the daintiest. She speaks good English and good bilingual, good biling, uh, bilingual. Um, accessories include size 14 white pumps and messed up and a messed up ponytail. She loves to sing and act like she's not eating. Again, her quirky qualities include awkwardly smiling when boys flirt with her and awkwardly twitching her eye back at them. And her special message for everyone is spread your butter on your bread and not your legs. Just kidding, but for real. Okay, let me, so she's saying, it's, 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 it's sounds like she's saying is spread your butter on your legs. No, spread your butter on your toes. Don't spread your butter on your legs. But I think she's trying to say spread butter, not your legs. So it, 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 she's like, don't spread your legs, spread joy. But she's saying, don't spread, she's saying spread your butter on your toes, but don't spread your butter on your legs. And I think she should have spread her butter on her legs and done the fucking <laughs> hair thing. <laughs> I think it would have been more successful. 
Well, this look is a mess. I don't get this fucking the writing, writing is, is terrible. She was the doll. The doll looks good. I will give her that. The doll does look good. The doll is cute. Everything else, I mean, I had to. So Laura Roach like goes in. He says, "From the neck up, beauty. From the neck down. Uh, from the neck up, beauty queen. The neck down, horror queen. That thick white ankle strap, horrible." And I don't get it. Your doll has RuPaul legs, but you have Danny DeVito's. Oh, that one, I was like, well, what is, she supposed to, <laughs> what is she supposed to do? Pad the doll legs, then make like a body tight? Like, I, think, I think that was, there's no way to make, like that's the doll she got. But other than that, I was like, damn, he cleared this bitch. I felt really bad for her. But she, but she does not look good. I, 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 we got to move on. Let's go on to Dawn. Up till Dawn. Um, meet Dawn. Her personality consists of intergalactic domination in a nice way, sincere introspection on her on her role in the universe, and having a 22 inch waist. Does she really? Damn. She's from the Valley of the Dawn, where all the Dawns are from. But now she lives in in, in Galaxy 919 on the edge of a beautiful beach, where she spends long, gorgeous days pretending to work from home. Get to work. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's get drunk. Quirky qualities include everything she's insane but she's gorgeous and great at her job blast off or something i, I wish that her gla- her galaxy would have been um like a new york area called like galaxy 646 you know uh, I mean? that's cute that, well, I don't that, that, that probably where that bitch is really forgot i think she just moved to new york recently so nine one oh jacob can you look up where, where 919 area code is yeah, maybe that's her thing. Uh, I think her writing was actually really good. Her, this is up there. This is up there in the top. Her writing is up there in the top with me. Nine one nine is Raleigh, North Carolina. There we go. Oh, interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think her writing is up there and with the, with the, with the best of them. I think this outfit is really good. This outfit is a solid number two. It looks really cool. It looks. It, yeah. it gives her perspective. She matches the doll. The fabric looks expensive. It's unique. I have not seen anything like this on the show before. I love a complete body cover up with another garment on top of it. Sometimes cool. I think they can look really cool. And she did a good job with it here. I love the matching gloves. She did a great job. This is very good. I agree. No, no. And uh, looking here, it looks like she was born in Raleigh and then moved to New York after. So New she was from not. Raleigh, which is the area. Um, good good yeah. uh, detective work. Jacob and Ryan. Yeah, no, um, no, no, no. I think Dawn looks amazing. She, this outfit is, is fucking incredible. I love her makeup. She looks so beautiful. I think Dawn really fucking killed it. Um, she looks, in, in, the doll was great. She, and getting her amazing makeup on that doll to look pretty much identical to hers, it was great. She looks, she, she killed. She turned. If it wasn't for uh, Q, she would have won the challenge. Oh, for sure. If Q would have got sent home last week, she would have won the challenge for real. Yeah, I agree. Um, Unless Amanda would have pulled. Oh God, shady! Read this bitch's. Let's go oh, on. Meet Q, fantasy edition. On her days off, she flutters about the forest just to just so everyone can take her beauty in. She is the only doll in the store with an extra box for all her fabulous clothes. I'm gonna get me started on the headpieces. The fantasy edition comes with a little bit of fairy dust, and then she threw some fairy dust in the air. She doesn't dance too good. But she moves a lot. A lot of people seem seem to like it. <laughs> Fantasy Q, Fantasy Q just wants you to know you uh, you too can be slaying it if you try hard enough. No dream is too big. That last part's a little cheesy, but this the writing is good and she looks incredible. This is I'm going to go ahead and say right now. I think so far this is the best look that's been on the season, for sure. She fucking but turned this it. This is what you brought home. What people have made, I think this is actually the best look. I cannot believe that she made this. I I, I cannot believe she made this. Yeah, this is so stunning. Like every part of it, except those fucking shoes. Her shoes mm-hmm. are often criminal. Are they? She what often wears. The it works with the outfit. What's wrong with the I shoe? Didn't, I didn't like the shoe. I did not like it. It was it was just so short and stumpy and like a little. I, don't I know. think she probably but used a shoe that, that she could like just like oh like, like I, I like can't believe her. how good this looks. I think she probably used a shoe that she didn't because she maybe she like glued the fabric to her shoe. Bitch, I'm not gonna mess up one of my nice shoes. She'd be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this fucking chunky heel to make this look. I'm probably only wear with this ever again. You know what I mean? 
could have fucking used the shoe that she wore in the last episode, that blue shoe that they, that she got red for, and cover that up. You already used it once. Anyway, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I think. She, I mean, I wore multiple times throughout the fuck. I wore shoes multiple times throughout my season. Did you redo any shoes? Um, yeah, I did. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did. Yeah. Um, I think this is incredible. This I I. I wrote down, I think that Nymphia and Q might be two of like the best seamstresses we've ever had on Drag Race, period. Did you see um, Nymphia's video of, of her making her red look last week? No. She posted a video of her, like the entire process. It is incredibly, immaculately. Made like, it? Yes. She constructed every aspect of it. Hand sewing all the, all the crystals, making all those. It is really impressive. I think Q and Nymphia truly might be the best seamstresses that like coming from the show. They're so good. Nymphia is, is one of the only girls from this season that does not follow you or me. She said not. Well, she follows me. Interesting. She uh, also doesn't follow RuPaul. I don't think she does follow you, Monet. I think we she did does. this. We did this. I I did this for the the opening of the season. But when I we started recently. She doesn't she, follow she, you she, or she, Bob. She followed me recently. Oh, yeah. that's because you follow her first. You fucking follow her. I did not um, follow her first. I actually just there's... followed her back yesterday when I looked at this outfit. Okay, I'm sure. We'll see if we have a season for that. Um, anyway, um, uh, yeah, I think Q looks incredible. This she made this headpiece. Her makeup was good. I think Q fucking and, and, and they were right. The tones that she picked contrasted everyone else so much. She really does stand out like from everyone else on the thing. And she's like this like fucking intergalactic. Guy. Like she looks like she looks like the the villain in um, who's gonna attack Dawn's planet. And she's trying to like enslave everyone on, on the planet to join her like evil uh, galactic army. Yeah, I can see that. Um, that actually makes a lot of sense. She looks so good. And she this win is so hands down deserved 1, that no one could even for it because it was it looked so fucking good. Um let's let's go into the judging. I mean, so uh so they asked Plasma why she can't use a bobby pin, which I think is like, girl, yeah, girl, put a fucking barbie in your hair. Um and they were asking Maya, like, bitch, why didn't you flip? Which honestly, I didn't even think about it, but yeah, bitch, why didn't you flip? <laughs> I think she's like she, I think, yeah. I mean, she, how many times she said the word flip? She said the word flip. Um, let me see one flipping, and then back flips, and then flip three different times. She mentioned flips and not a single flip. I know. Bless her. Bless her heart. Um, I uh, what else did I write in the con in the in the contouring? Oh. Oh, yeah, I, I, we, we talked about this before, but Michelle compliments Dawn on changing up her elf airs and not being a color. And I wrote, yeah, Nymphia, fucking yellow ass is sitting right next to her. Like, to me, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, Q wins the challenge, oh, which oh, is oh, deserved. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, I wrote this down. Rue asked Q, um, what, would her doll, what would her doll cost? She said something like twenty nine. I bet you, you should have said $200,000. That was a missed opportunity for RuPaul to be like, ah. no, Q said... She said one million rubles. Yeah, that what she said. I know she should have said two hundred thousand dollars. Duh. Yeah, one million rubux was a really lame. One million rubux can't <laughs> put a price on that. I was like, girl, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> um. So uh, Q wins deserve. Maya and Geneva on the bottom also deserves. And um. I and agree. then in this lip sync, they're doing. Nasty girl? No, is it nasty girl? No, it no. was um, control. 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 Yeah. Um, and Maya just slayed Geneva into oblivion. Yeah. Bless her heart. Geneva crash car. I mean, Geneva was in the bottom. That was her third time in the bottom. Geneva only had one episode of the show where she did not lip sync. We know she won one. We know. We know. She actually won two. Um well, no, she didn't lip sync the episode she won. But you know, that's what I mean. She was, there was not an episode, there was not a single episode where she was not in the top or the bottom. She didn't have a single episode where she was not in the top or in the bottom. That's crazy. See, see that, that's she what Geneva's has, like. I'm never a mid type of bitch. I only do the best or the worst. That's who I am as a person. She, she, she was, I think she's technically in the lead when she left. She's the only one with two wins. No, Nymphia has two wins. Wait, did Nymphia lip sync against Geneva or did Geneva lip sync against... Nymphia didn't lip sync oh, against... Oh, no. Geneva did not win that first episode. G Wait, did Geneva win? Plain no, Jane Geneva lost... Geneva lost the lip sync to Plain Jane. You're right. So, no, she only had one win. But she but she made it to the top twice. 
Yeah, she she is a very uh, polarizing. Her talents are very polarizing. She's either the top or she's the bottom. There's nothing in between for her. She's out of the mid, like y'all raggedy ass bitches. You know, I had quite a few safe episodes, so you better than me, baby. <laughs> um, so uh, goodbye to Geneva Carr, headed back to Brownsville, uh, which has a very bustling, fierce, vibrant drag scene. And um, and I'm sure they're very proud of her. Yeah. Yeah. Especially um, and, uh, and especially uh, uh, a Joella Puss. I had a lot to say about her, apparently. Not Joella Puss. And Puss. Maya Wynn. Um, Luscious Massacre. One of, the, one of the Brownsville girls. And Maya, Maya wins and had uh, some great... Uh, I'm sure that people from Miami are very happy for her. Monet, now that you know what you know now, who's going to win RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16? Honestly, if we're looking at consistency, I still think Nymphia... Before, it's looking to me like Nymphia and Plain Jane. Like, Plain Jane is just, in multiple uh, aspects of this competition, she has proven herself that she's good at a lot of it. Like, she's a good writer. They think she's funny. She can act in that fucking acting challenge. She can sew. Like, she's really, uh, uh, she's she's clearly a multidisciplinary talented person um, that won't stop fucking shaking her like a dumbass bitch. Um, I do think that um, the top, I think the winner at this point might be Nymphia. Nymphia's doing a very good job. I really just can't see Safira slipping up because she's been pretty consistently good. Also, we didn't even discuss that she just randomly used her. Oh, her, yes, um, her potion. She drank the potion. Like, and then immediately was like, dumb bitch. Like, um, she drank it and immediately was like, a mistake. Yeah. Well, that's because the girls got in her head. head. Like, girl, you okay. All, they all got her head, and plain Jane got in her head too, making her think that she was gonna, be, she's about to be in the bottom. But what, do you know? Do you know what yeah. we, what they are setting us up for though? Plain Jane is gonna have a big fall. A challenge is gonna come where she's not gonna do well because she's doing well so far, and it's gonna be, especially with her track record of uh, of coming for everyone and being shady and rude and nasty. It's gonna be a big fall for her. Yeah, I don't know if Plain's gonna make the finale. She'll make it close, but I think Dawn's gonna be there. I think Safira's gonna be there, and I think Nymphia's gonna be there. I see that. Plasma, plasma and Dawn. It could be Plasma or Dawn, to be honest. I so think that Dawn has a much three. better stand. I think Plasma is a better performer. You're saying a top three. Nymphia, Safira, yeah. and Dawn, or Plasma? One of those two. Yeah, Dawn and Plasma can swap out. But I think it I might be... see Nymphia, Plain Jane, and my swaps are Safira, Safira and Dawn. One of those two. I don't think... Pla I think Plasma's gonna be like a... A Monet Miss Cracker placements her first season, like a six or a five. So thank you all for joining us for this episode of Sipping Watchery. And you can hop over to our Patreon to hear our exclusive thoughts about this episode of Untucked featuring Law Roach. See you all soon.